everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another exciting episode of CSK News. It's going to be a weekend recap of what all happened the past few days, especially since my last episode of CSK News. As always, all of today's stories will be time marked down below. Let's hop into our first story, though. I know many of you guys are aware of the number of scammers out there, the increase in scams, not only in CSGO, but any virtual games out there that actually have virtual items worth money. CSGO being the lead dog when it comes to that, with the millions and millions of dollars out there in CSGO skins every single day. Of course, I'm sure many of you guys are aware of that. But my good friend and actually had to come across, this is actually Zuri, a former gambler himself had come across one of the largest and youngest scammers in the CSGO scene ever, just 14 years of age. Now again, I want to preface before I show you guys a clip of this video, as well as it'll be linked down below for all of you guys, I really encourage you watch it because during this video it actually shows you live the proof of his scams and how he went down and actually acquired over $40,000 in skins in just 9 months. Before I get into that though, I want to preface that yes, Zuri is a former gambler, he does not gamble any longer, he doesn't make gambling videos, although he actually has made quite a bit of money from gambling itself, this is just to kind of try and expose all the methods out there. It's not trying to promote all of you guys to go out there and start scamming people yourselves. So to preface that kind of thing with this video, guys, it'll be linked down below. But a 14-year-old kid out there somewhere in the world, actually a nice interview is that video down below. He actually goes over all the methods he had with the live proof on screen, had somehow made over $40,000 in just nine months. Name a job out there that a 14-year-old could even apply for to even make anywhere near that money. There is no job out there right now. It's just kind of a shock to me to always see these CSGO news stories out there that are revolving around scamming and it, the amount of opportunities out there for people to be to be very despicable and make a ton of money off of it it's kind of insane to think about a few years ago people didn't have this option there were no there were no big scams like this until games like CS:GO came around or even virtual items came around it's just insane to me to think that when i was 14 years old i was trading rubber bands for erasers in grade school but some 14 year old out there is now making tens of thousands of dollars scamming people so as always guys if it's too good to be true it's probably too good to be true and always watch out for scammers now on top of that i do want to talk about you know kind of going on that gambling scene out there. I want to talk and ask you guys, what do you think about this? Because this past weekend, we also had kind of a shocking news story here. We actually had Phantom Lord. I'm sure many of you guys are aware of what happened. His past was scamming the community out there or allegedly scamming people, although we know it was most likely it was. Okay, he scammed people. We all knew that. And unfortunately enough, Get Right himself actually decided to gamble with Phantom Lord live on his live stream, as in they were the same call themselves and they were gambling together. I don't know what you guys think about this. I'll play a short clip. What do you guys think about a pro player out there actually gambling on live stream with Phantom Lord, it seems like a bad rap to have. You know, we, obviously I don't support Phantom Lord. I don't think you guys should either. So it kind of puts Get Right in a bad light in my own eyes. What do you guys think about that? Leave a comment down below. And here's a clip of Get Right gambling with the Phantom Lord. Oh, oh what it is? He's going in. Uh, Good luck. Oh, he got my favorite AK. Uh, you like the Empress? That's pretty sick. Come on, come on. Yes. Woo! <laughs> nice, dude. Uh, yeah, I really like that one. I haven't uh, got a whole... And also in very cool news this weekend, it was actually released by Double Tap. They have a lot of good interviews on their channel. I'll link that down below for all of you. An interview with Richard Lewis this past weekend, though, did reveal his stance on the Ibohauer situation. Of course, Valve permanently banning those guys ever, ever since, and of course, not even responding openly to that particular situation. Richard Lewis talked about his stance on the whole thing. So a very cool video, link down below for all of you. But even more importantly, this past weekend, a spoiler alert for all of you guys who are watching Epicenter who have not watched it yet. One of the better tournaments we have seen so far throughout 2017 and viewership numbers did obviously agree with that if you guys were not aware we had a return of Virtus Pro which I can't even begin to explain right now the, the return of this team I'm not sure what's more surprising from epicenter finals it was SK versus Virtus Pro one of the better finals we've ever seen it went to map 5 double overtime to finish the grand final itself but again back to what I was saying I'm not really sure what's more surprising leave a comment down below what you guys think about this is the fact that SK's very first official tournament with bolts was a victory or the fact that Virtus Pro returned so hard after losing I actually did some analysis for all of you guys who are wondering their past 50 maps This actually goes from back from the end of August to about last week uh, during October uh, the, the weekend of the 20th of October their last 50 maps They only won 21 of those maps with significant losses now Of course most of these were actually online matches, but they lost to teams You probably have never heard of teams like AGO They also lost to Nexus to pride a random team known as jalapeno They also had had their their beef with NIP NIP sweeping these guys as well at an elite premier event So they really did have their struggles but we saw a Virtus Pro here that we have not seen in a long time. That's very re encouraging. But even more importantly, guys, SK Bolts has now officially cemented his spot on this team in the future. I think early 2018, we can actually assume as of right now, with this certified placement and after the major being with Phelps, he probably will have a spot on this team if he does want it. And they did so well, performing so well, and he did a fair, his fair share as well. SK looking dominant throughout the entire tournament. We also saw FaZe Clan fall to teams like Virtus Pro. Virtus Pro beating teams like FaZe Clan and Gambit. Early on, they lost to SK. 
SK in the, in the first preliminary matches, and they returned to SK in the finals, but they returned with some heavy fire. But again, making it one of the better series I've ever seen. If you guys want to rewatch that, I'll link some stuff down below for all of you. A best of five in a grand final, going to Mat 5 double overtime. What do you guys think about the Epicenter event? The viewer numbers are up, guys. CSGO is alive, and that was a really, really cool thing to see. Now, also on top of that, though, some very important stories no one is really currently touching on involving Kenny S and Stanislaw. Actually, as of a few days ago, we've had Stanislaw's Twitter. It might have been hacked. Who knows if it actually was Peter himself, but it actually was his Twitter handle was changed to see ya, obviously saying see you later if you guys do not know that the, the denomination of where that comes from, with, along with this tweet being posted as well. So no one really knows as of right now why no one has commented on this. No pro players are talking about it as well. It seems he either was hacked or maybe he's playing a joke on all of us. Of course, maybe if he were to leave Team Liquid, where would he go? And right now it's kind of a weird time because major qualifiers are coming up. So it seems this probably is another one of those trolls out there. Who knows if he's seeking attention or if someone did hack his account. We'll touch on this more in the future. But also coming from Kenny S's Instagram, as you guys can see on screen, he has this been posted. Several pictures saying that, yes, their announcement will soon to be an announcement from Kenny S. Who knows whether it's going to be a roster change. Most likely, though, probably going to be a sponsorship announcement. We'll touch on that in a few days, guys. We'll see what happens updates-wise with Stanislaw and Kenny S's announcement coming sometime soon. As always, hope you guys all enjoyed the weekend recap of CSGO News. If you guys did, please leave a like or a comment down below. Ask me any questions you guys want to. And I'll, as always, I will see you all in a couple days. Remember, my name is Jake. Remember, like you. And uh, goodbye.